All right, welcome to Black Lodge Trivia Night, or welcome back if you've checked out some of our other stuff. If you have, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we have a channel on our on our YouTube page called uh, One Eye Jacks, I think, and what goes there is sort of let's plays of some video games. I've done a playthrough of Demon Souls by this point. I know Matt just did something with Dredge that'll end up coming over from Twitch to that part of the page. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to <laughs> maybe embark on something intensely stupid. And you can probably see there's a couple things going on here. You know, with the Demon Souls and, you know, if you followed any of my Elden Ring playthrough on the other channel, um, this is going to be primarily where I do stuff from now on for the most part, as, as far as I can tell, when it comes to like CRPGs. And right now what I'm looking at is 1992's Darklands from Microprose. Uh, Microprose. I don't know if I accented that second R uh, quite right. Um, the game takes place, as you can see there on the screen, in uh, greater Germany in maybe the 14th century. It's kind of a historical CRPG. And the reason why I wanted to get into this, and I'm not promising a full playthrough of this game, uh... I, I'm, you're going to watch me stumble badly uh, in a little bit here. But I wanted to get into it because part of the same reason why I wanted to bring Souls you know, onto the channel. One, I love these games. But two, there's something about them that influences how I play tabletop RPGs. Darklands came out, like I said, in 1992, so it obviously has a much longer influence on, you know, my thinking about games and so on and so forth than, than the Souls games, because those obviously started coming out maybe, well, I guess 15 years ago at this point. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, but Darklands very much influenced what I'm looking for in a fantasy game, and I apologize. I keep looking over here because I've got a screen in front of me different things are in different parts of the, uh, of the screen. So I apologize when my eyes are going all over the place. Uh, but I wanted to talk about this game and then we'll get into it a little bit. Um, I'm a huge fan. I, you know, still have my original, uh, Darklands. I don't know if it's getting flipped around Darklands clue book. This was essential because it was the only way for the game's original release to be patched. Uh, it's kind of interesting. There's a YouTube channel, and I'll put these links in the in the notes. There's a YouTube channel, I think, called Matt's Chats. And he's, uh, I, I apologize to Matt's Chats uh, channel owner. I, I don't remember the specifics. I think he's a professor that teaches video games in some capacity. I don't know if it's like as an art form and the history. I don't think it's coding. But anyway... And he does a lot of like little 10, 15 minute segments. He has one for Darklands. And more importantly, though, his channel has one of the only interviews with the game's creator that I think I've ever seen. Um, I'm trying to see. I think I wrote his name down here. Uh, yeah, the lead designer was named Arnold Hendrick. And so a lot of what I'm about to say probably comes from that interview straight from the horse's mouth. Again, I'll try and get links to it in the, in the show notes, because it's really worth checking out if you have any interest in, interest in this game. But uh, yeah, it was like the first time Microprose ever embarked on trying to do a CRPG. It was intensely ambitious, as I hope to show in a little bit. And again, like I said, I'm not promising a full playthrough in any capacity. Um, I don't even know if people would want to see that. The game is old. But I think it's worth looking at. Uh, and because of that, because of the first time, you know, creating this kind of game, they, you know, they made a lot of mistakes. Um, in my mind, it makes for like an absolutely fascinating failure is too strong a word. But I guess in some ways it was because, as he said in the interview, like initial sales were very strong. Then the sales actually became negative because more people were returning the game than were buying it new. And one of the reasons for that is because it had a basically a save game destroying memory leak bug for like the first six or seven months after release. So it might have been impossible to actually complete the game for the better part of a year after the game's release. And again, I'll link to the to the interview because that's I, 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 in case I'm remembering this incorrectly. But anyway, uh, 
what's important in terms of my role playing is that it was the first time I played a role playing game that a fantasy role playing game, I should say, that took place in like the real world. Uh, I, I didn't play much Dungeons and Dragons growing up. The main fantasy game that we played was uh, Iron Crown Enterprises. I'm looking at it over here. Middle Earth's role playing game, Merp. Clearly not a real world. Um, and there's somebody out there saying, sir, how dare you? But it's, you know what I mean? Uh, so this game sort of fantasy has never really been my thing, but this setting, this kind of setting really clicked. And at some point here on the channel, I might run something from the days of old game. I've converted it from the original sort of, the system is legends from mongoose that sort of not too well supported. That's where you can get Deus Vault. You can buy it at Mongoose. I'll try and have a link in the show note there as well. I've converted the whole thing over to Savage Worlds. I'm currently running it. Uh, Matt and Patrick from Black Lodge Trivia Night are in that game, as well as a few other people from the uh, AAC Alcoholic Adventure Cabal. Anyway, what this game brings to the table is a fantasy setting that's grounded in ways that lets me sort of click with it. Um, magic is not, I usually like low magic. The magic in this takes the form of alchemy, which again, you could argue is not real, but it's, you know, grounded in like earth's, you know, sort of legends, lores, history, and then religion. And in this case, you know, the Holy Roman, Roman emperor empire, Catholic church, etc., in the forms of saints and prayers. So it sort of gives a, a real context. It's not just magic missile and somebody's color spray. It, it sort of creates this context that is, you know, something you might have learned about in a history class or, if, you know, if you go to church or, uh, you know, so it, it creates this sort of grounding that really helps me create that suspension of disbelief, which I, I sometimes have trouble with when it comes to fantasy. The, the things you're dealing with in the game, the monsters, the, you know, the creatures, you know, they all have some root in the folklore of the time, as you'll hopefully get to see. And, you know, it ends up being, you know, pretty typical stuff. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll get to, I'll, I'll just jump in in a second. But I just want to sort of give that, that thing, you know, I, like I said, I showed you have the original clue book. I've got like a copy of the game. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Uh, my copy is not original. I, I hunted it down after the fact. I really wanted it because I needed the... Uh, key uh keyboard shortcut commands just in case i need them it comes with a really nice map uh the you know this is back when you know manuals you know had some weight to them and it includes you know some uh copy protection here that i might need you, you know all this stuff if you buy this game on steam or, or gog you get a lot of these things in sort of a download form but i wanted a i wanted a hard copy i i, I for whatever it's worth i prefer hard copy so I'm going to try and get it started in a second. I'm going to be sort of, none of this matters. I'm capturing it all at once, which can be sort of a trickier thing. It's a lot easier for me since I don't stream this to capture pieces individually and just sort of stitch them together. I'm not doing that in this case. Uh, the artwork is from Adobe's, you know, uh, stock service. I subscribe to it. It's a, I think it's an actually a cathedral, but I was just trying to find something sort of slightly thematic. But yeah, so what you're going to see over here is you're going to see you know, I'm going to be able to hopefully cut from this map to uh, the game itself. There's like a list of cities uh, you can see here. And of course, grid coordinates, you know, ABCDFG on the bottom, uh, the numbers on the, on the side. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, anyway, uh, so we're going to, there's a way to sort of restore it to recenter it, but I don't want to mess with it too much. Anyway, so we're going to mess with that, um, you know, as needed. And let me get this game started up. Like I said, it's gonna, I'm capturing all this live. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but uh, this might give me a slight problem because it's going to be the wrong thing for a second. There we go. Like I said, fair warning, this game is old. <laughs> so, um, I 
I'll let this play out. It's pretty rough, right? <laughs> Even for 1992 standard, this might have been a little rough. So <laughs> when I first loaded this game up, probably 1990, it was pretty close to release. Um, I wasn't expecting digital speech, so it kind of actually scared the shit out of me. Uh, so here we are. We can now, um, let's see. Uh, there's a couple things you can do. Like a, like a pro tip would be to sort of use the quick start characters, steal their equipment, and then sort of add it to your new characters if you want to make your own party i'm just gonna jump right in um so what you can see here is you get you know like a lot of again the one here's the here's the game i just i just want to keep stressing like this game came out in 1992 and it's the bad what you're seeing sort of with the graphics and stuff like that but as we get into it i i think this game still offers like a stunning amount of gameplay for for what it is we're going to create a character uh so the way this character creation works it sort of borrows and i think the creator um mr hendrix said like his two favorite paper and pencil role-playing games sort of back in the day were traveler and rune quest and the reason why that's important is because you know it sort of is a meld of those two things the rune quest is a sort of like a d100 system uh, the Traveler is sort of like the life path system that you're going to see in a second. And so you get to make four characters. A fifth slot is kept open for NPCs that you pick up. Um, and you sort of want to have sort of the following balance. You sort of want to have like a, a party leader. You want everybody to be able to fight a little bit. You want a party leader. You want somebody who can talk like common, you know, sort of like a high charisma face kind of character it helps for that to be the leader you want someone who speaks latin and is good with the saints because the latin will help you get into the churches and universities and then you can sort of study the saints uh you want somebody who's good at alchemy because you know you, again you sort of want both kind of mages and then finally you definitely need somebody who can heal um so let's get started and hopefully some of this will work itself out. So we're going to start our our party leader here and we're going to look for something that will help us make a fighter. Let's see what nobility does. Now, I confess I haven't played this game literally in decades, so I'm not 100% sure uh, how to go about this. Um, I think you have 89 points to spend. Uh, endurance stats are harder to raise than skills, so it's important to get your stats up. I think if you you can go up, but if you want to go down, I think you have to click down here. So let's get this up to 30 to begin with. Strength and endurance are key fighting stats. And I think at least like Traveler 2nd Edition, it sort of borrows a little bit. So I'm curious if this is true in the old school Traveler, where like when you're taking damage in combat, you're taking it from your strength and endurance. Now, I think in at least 2nd Edition, you take it from maybe endurance first, and then it goes to strength. Here, it can do either as you go. Um, we're going to do some charisma because again, we want to have somebody who's like a fast talker. Are we also doing this? This is speak common. Are we also, no, we're not there yet. 
Um, what do we got? 48 points left. Can I, I just want to make sure I can't bump everything. So let's get this up to 40. Uh, is it, yeah, as you can see, every time I click one as it goes up, it's actually taking three points, two points. So it does sort of have like a bit of a, I guess like a logarithmic curve. I don't know. So let's get up to 35. Let's get up charisma up to 30. These stats here, agility, perception, intelligence, my understanding, I just want to say as much as I, you know, there's the interview that I'm going to link to with uh, Arnold Hendrick from Matt's Chats, uh, Josh, Josh Sawyer, who's like a big time, I think he was a big time part of the recent release Pentiment, um, one of my favorite games, Icewind Dale, he had a big part of that, he was the lead on Icewind Dale 2, which I also love. I think he had a big part in uh, Fallout New Vegas. He did a playthrough on Twitch, and there's a couple of videos, the opening and definitely the closing on his YouTube channel. I'll try and link to that. He'll have far more interesting things to say about game design as a whole than I ever will. Uh, so I'll, I'll link to that as well. But um, but the point is, so some of the tips I actually, you know, because like I said I haven't played this in a long time, I actually got from him. Agility helps you avoid traps, like it'll do like checks in game. Perception helps you like avoid ambushes. Again, it's checks in game. Intelligence, not sure what that's going to do for me here. Um, maybe that can go down a little bit, down to 25. Let's get strength up a little bit. Because again, remember, these are hard to up once you're in game. And I guess percep. Oh, wow, one hole into perception. I don't know what I'm doing, so this could be a mistake. So let's. Uh, we're done changing attribute. Now we get to choose a life path. Um, you see up here, you start at 15 years of age. Every time you do one of these selections, it adds five years. You want to stop before you start taking penalties, much like Traveler. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make this guy. As you see, as I hover over, you can see the stats changing. So this is going to add one each to my strength agility. Um, a little bit more to, to charisma. You know, so you can sort of choose everything you want to do. I'm going to go with recruit because uh, that's going to help me here with some, some weapon stuff. All right. So you have uh, edge, impale, uh, polearm. Maybe that's like a flail, throne, bow. Um, I don't know if that's just like a, I don't know what that is to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna get some points going in. So you can see I can put three points in and I've got a total of 37. I'm gonna sort of bump these two up, why not? Um, throne weapon, a lot of people do throne. I'm gonna do I'm guessing this is thrown bow and then like missile weapons, which would be like a crossbow, which is considered different than. Okay, so I'm gonna bump those up and let's see what else we can do here. Because this is like my charisma guy, I want him to be able to speak common so he can sort of talk his way through stuff. Um, we've got heal, artifice, stealth, Streetwise, ride, woodwise. So woodwise is streetwise, but out in the wild, it helps you spot ambushes, maybe creatures. I'm not sure. Streetwise helps you when you're in the back alleys. Artifice is with like picking locks. I don't know if it's an super useful. I'm sure there is times are times when it is, but but I'm not 100% sure how useful it is as a whole. But um, stealth, I think. It sort of checks like your lowest, which is a pretty typical regular RPG thing. So it's hard to get everybody's stealth up high enough to make a difference. And if you're a good fighter, then it might not matter so much that your stealth is is crap. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can't put any more into speak common. So I'm going to put some into, put some into bow. I'll put some into flail make this guy general overall fighter because that's clearly what it wants to do maybe I'll put some into that and 
Ride is something that helps you sort of move around the map faster, I believe. So I'll add some to that. I think read write is more important for the person that's going to be studying at university. So, um, what else? I guess woodwise. Somebody's got to have a little bit of woodwise. And polearm. Why not? Okay. So now we can go to the next occupation. Now it's going to, we can go switch things up a little bit to get other stats. Uh, soldier's going to keep bumping our noble air will up our charisma. You see the ob obli drops the charisma down a little bit. Um, probably don't want to go from a soldier. So you can see the noble air is going to give us some bumps on the lower skills like heal could go way up. Um, Again, you need one person with a good heal skill because that's sort of how it determines everything. Uh, let me do another soldier. So again, I'm going to speak common because I want this guy to be my face guy. What did I do last time? Woodwise. Um, hmm. Again, I'll bump these up. The way skills go up is actually kind of the way like Elder Scrolls games do it where... The more you use it, the more it goes up, which is actually a, a sort of a D100 thing. Um, I know like in Call of Duty, again, I'm going to try and connect this to paper and pencil role playing as much as I can, because I feel like in my experience and, you know, viewpoint, there's a lot of overlap. And like I said, this game helps shape how I think about actual like paper and pencil role playing games quite a bit. So, um... So that's a D100 thing. Like in Call of Cthulhu, you can, you know, I don't want to do that. Let's put it back into bow. Like you mark the skills you use and those are the skills that have a chance to go up. Um, so let's go up to the next. So you can see now I'm 25. Let's go to the next occupation. So now that I've done two terms as a soldier, I can now become a veteran. And you can see. Uh, so let's try that. Let's make this guy all in on soldiering so you can see now i've got a little bit more points to spend on speak common because now i'm a commander it makes sense uh throw some more points at woodwise make this my woodwise guys what do i got 10 left let's keep going with bow put f five or so in there and then do i want my main weapon to be edge yeah i mean you know i'm sort of gone all in okay 30, so I'm going to do one more. I want to stop at age 35 just to be safe. I'm not exactly sure when the penalties start to kick in. So let me see. I could choose like a noble heir, which would let me really bump up speak common before we get into it. While well, still putting some points into things. But as you can see, it's going to mess up my perception. My charisma has gone down because I'm a veteran. So this might bump it back up. I think I'm going to bump it back up. Put a lot of points into Speak Common. One last chance to bump it up. Some more into Bow. One of the, I wonder which one is for hammer. With my luck, it's flail. Hammers, I think, you know, got this from, you know, Josh Sawyer, Sawyer's playthrough that hammers can be pretty good. And I confess I've always had a soft spot for war hammers and one-handed hammers in role-playing games for some reason. Um, all right, so we're going to... I'm just going to stick with the names. I don't really care what the names are. Uh, so let's add... Nope. Nope. Uh, let's delete from the party. Okay. So we're going to add Sighard to the party. Uh, and then you get to do things like, you know, a lot of cosmetic things. You can choose its her her heraldry. That's, I think, Bavarian. Now, the only reason why I know that is because I have relatives from Bavaria and uh, just saw those colors recently. That's fine. 
Uh, then you can select your character image. Pretty, pretty broad. And you can choose some different hair colors. Uh, you can choose different uniform colors. What do I got? Brown. There you go. Okay, so that's one. All right, let's create another character. Um, again, you can select a new name. You can make them a woman. Uh, making them a woman, you know, I think actually does change stats. You can see in endurance goes up, but strength goes down. I don't know if they sort of one-to-one -one make the totals add up completely and just sort of shift them around a little bit, but there you go. Uh, let's see. So let's begin childhood with ties. I'm probably going to butcher these names. So for the next person, let's, uh, we've got a fighter. Everybody should know how to fight a little bit. Um, my fear though, is I didn't spend any points. So let's, yeah, let's create a character. Okay, so we're going to make this person, we need this person, let's make this person the uh, religious person. So, so we want Latin, we want religion, virtue, those kinds of things. Uh, probably read and write, maybe heal, we'll make this the healer. Um... So given that, we would probably want higher intelligence. So which one's going to bump our intelligence up? Town trade, okay. Let's try town trade. So we're going to, again, you're probably going to want to bump, because everybody should know how to fight. That's the problem, or else you're dead. And let's get intelligence going. Uh... The problem is, you know, I probably could research this. There's a, there's really good guides on, on the Steam pages, you know. Just Google it and I'll tell you probably exactly how to walk through this. Uh, let's, let's bump up some agility just so we have somebody that's good at it. I don't know if it's worth doing, but let's do it. Get some more intelligence. And then a um, little charisma in case they need to talk, I guess. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so let's figure out. We want to be... We're looking for speak Latin, uh, virtue, religion, and maybe heal. So, novice monk is pretty good. Uh, let's see. An oblate gets us a lot more Latin. How is it doing on heal? A little bit less heal. What about the religion? Hairless. Let's do that. I don't. I don't. Can't say I know what that is. So uh, let's bump up religion. Let's bump up this. Let's bump up speak Latin. Bump up some read write and heal. Again, you only need one person with heal. And then let's pick a weapon. Uh, let's do. They're going to be. The religious person, so they're gonna be praying to saints, so they might not be throwing alchemy potions. So let's give them some of that. Let's go to the next occupation. Let's try. All right, let's try a novice monk. Uh, you know, who knows? Religion will go up a little bit. Uh, we need some. We need some better weapons, though. Let's do little edge. Little missile. Uh, let's get back to this a little bit. And heal, definitely. Oh, probably, yeah. Okay. Um, read, write. All right. Next occupation, let's try, ooh, okay, so now we've got a friar, so we can move up in the church a little bit. What does this give us? Definitely a bump to religion. Um, definitely speak, well, speak common, speak Latin's pretty good, though. Let's choose it. Let's bump this up, because we need to be able to fight. Oh, interesting. Okay, because we're, you know, we don't have a ton of points. 
So I might not want to put that into religion. Let's do a couple there, a couple there. Okay. We've got one more slot. Briar. Yeah, why not? Speak Latin. All right, I guess that's uh So let's add Saboto to the party. Now let's change some stuff here. The heraldry, you know, who cares? This guy's a friar of sorts, so let's do that. He's got the little haircut going. Uh, let's see. Uh, the colors, who cares? Right. Uh, let's uh, create another character. Uh, let's make this the alchemist. Yeah, make it a woman, why not? Uh, Kunhild. Can you just select a new name? Oh, oh okay. Brunhild. Yeah, why not? Uh, so let me see. If it's a... We're probably going to need intelligence and some alchemy. Town trade seems to be the trick. Um, intelligence. Again, let's do this. Now, the question is... This person might also need Latin to study at the universities, which also might require some charisma. Again, I, I want to make sure everybody can fight. Some charisma just to deal with stuff. Agility. I guess should somebody be agile? I don't know if I already did agile or perception. I forget which. Uh, let's bump up that and... Put one in there, okay. All right, so we're looking for alchemy. What is a what does a student get? Four for alchemy, seven for speak Latin. So that could be helpful. Uh, artifice could also be a little bit useful. Let's see, craftsman. So basically, as I'm scrolling over, I'm looking to see how the alchemy potential, whoops, I'm pointing on the screen, the alchemy potential right there changes. That's how many points you can put in. So an oblate will let me put six into alchemy, eight into speak Latin. Uh, and, you know, it's not bad for, but I'm wondering if I go student, it gives me read write, which could help. So let me, uh, I'm going to pick a different weapon, ah, I should be picking these, right? Alchemist is going to be throwing. They'll be throwing potions. Um, definitely bump up alchemy. Read, write. Speak Latin, I guess. Artifice. Just so somebody can do it. Uh, nobody has streetwise, so let me do that a little bit. And then... Uh, why not? So let's just see what the... I, I think I chose a student. Let's see what they can do now. Is it continue being a student? Oh, an alchemist. Okay. Let's go for it. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Read, write. Uh, speak some of that. Uh, some artifice. Some weapons. And some more streetwise. So I'm 25. So let's see what the next occupation is. A professor. Let's choose a professor. See what it does. Probably not realistic. Not, you know, at the risk of sounding crappy. Um, but who cares, right? This is, that's not the point. Let's bump up alchemy. Bump up, read, write, speak Latin. Uh, artifice. 
a little streetwise, and then a little more edge. Uh, 30, so we got one more. Uh, let's see, we can do Master Alchemy. Yeah, why not, right? That's what we're here for. Uh, let's see, a little of that. Probably don't need to have that at 40 at this point, right? Oh, I've been I've been putting anything into throne. Okay, all right. So this one's uh, she's done, Brunhild. So let's add Brunhild to the party. Okay, so we've got a fighter. We've got a priest. We've got well. First of all, let's nope. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, so yeah, let's make. Um, doesn't need to be quite change the different colors. I don't know what good colors are, but yeah, that's fine. And then let's create one more character. So we've got a good fighter. We've got somebody with some healing, somebody with some artifice, some streetwise, some woodwise. So let's make another fighter of some sort. Urban Commoner, why not? Get that strength up. I'm nervous that there's somebody else I should have, like a, 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 a type that I'm not. Let me make this guy perceptive. Even though I don't think it matters unless they're in the lead, which I think is the problem, but, but why not? Make him agile. Okay. What do we want him to be? What can they do with bandit? Pretty high ride. Um, good stealth, but I think, again, it only matters if everybody has good stealth, so I'm not sure... Thief has... Yeah, why not make him a thief, right? Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, why not? Just in case it matters. Just in case it matters. Six left. Um, okay, go to next occupation. All right, last time we did thief. Interesting that thief bumps up intelligence, and not that I can speak one way to another. But let's keep going with thief in case uh, it goes somewhere. Let's do that. So we're at 25. Oh, you know what? Just stick with Thief. Why not? Oh, Virtue. That might be a problem. I think it actually does take that into account in some ways. I'm not sure how, so I probably should have been paying more attention. Okay. Let's... um. Yeah, I might need to deal with that a little bit. Uh, anything here? Okay. Uh, one more. Go to next occupation. Maybe then, you know, he tries to turn his life around and gets out of the gets out of the game. Tries to go legit. 
Make him a laborer. He gets his virtue up a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, that seems okay. I'm sort of just sort of making everybody kind of a mush of weapons, obviously, so you can be good at different things. Uh, what do I got? 13 left. Yeah, I'll put it into the things that he was doing. Probably, again, not worth it, but there we go. Begin adventuring. Uh, let's add Eckhard to the party. Now, can we change the order? Uh, what's Eckhard doing? Whoops. I'll make him one of those two, I guess. Uh, I should change their heraldry. Uh, let's see. Let's change some colors. Make him a redhead, I guess. Okay. Change heraldry. Nope. Don't want a cards see uh, Brunhild. Let's see if I do it over here. If I change. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's fine. Let's uh, begin the adventure. You gather around the comfortable fire at the shift uh, shift Bjorn. I'm going to butcher all that. I apologize. In the city of Würzburg. Then we are agreed, said Seacard. We will swear this pact of loyalty to achieve justice and glory for all, and everyone nods. You all swear a pact as blood brothers to seek good and avoid evil and to bring everlasting honor and glory to your names. So if you want to know what do you do in Darklands, there is sort of an overarching plot, but a lot of it is just get famous. Um, so let's, um, so where do they say we are? We are starting in... Würzburg. Okay, so let's check out where that is and see how this works. Uh, we're going to switch back to our map. And we're going to go for Würzburg, which is C6. So there's 6. C6. Okay, so there we go. We are down here. That's where we're going to be starting. I, I think it's kind of randomized. Um, I had one game where I was starting... Maybe down in Zurich. I was really at the base of the map, but we're here. We're in Würzburg. Würzburg. So let's um, go back to the game and uh, go from there. So um, what can we do? You look around at each other, and now that we have a goal, C card remarks Riley. Not sure why he would say that, Riley. How shall we achieve it? Let's visit the market and the guilds in search of better equipment and more training, suggests Saboto. I've also heard that the churches and monasteries may take on students. Once we find some teachers, we can just stay here and work at various things until the money runs low. Everyone nods, wise plan, remarks Brunhild, but why not take action now? Thieves infest the back streets here at night. We can gain repute, experience, and a bit of plunder by eliminating the scum. Let us also listen to rumors and visit the marked plots to learn about the tasks the merchants may have for us. There's an unhappy look on Eckhart's face. Don't we need to find armor and good weapons? Uh, maybe the sale of one or two valuable items would give us the funds to help everyone here. I am loath to venture into the dangerous countryside without good equipment. After discussing these issues, you decide to. And so this is how the game presents basically everything in cities. It's a series of menus. And what I love about it is, you know, in, in, in video games these days, you know, they do an amazing job at, um, at showing, right? You know, you don't have to imagine the world of Skyrim quite so much. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Quite so much because the game, the presentation, the graphics is so good at at showing so much of it to you. And now when, when I play games like Skyrim, I still fill in little bits here and there. But this does what tabletop RPGs do. It sort of evokes, um, evokes the setting. It sort of starts to 
plant things in your imagination so you can start creating an image of what it's like to be in Würzburg in this uh, in this tavern. You know, the music, I know it's repetitive, but it sort of has, in my mind, it has like this sort of appropriate charm that helps, you know, sort of get set the mood. And so what we can do is we can, you know, spend some time here in the uh, Schiffbjörn, the local inn. We can immediately leave the city of Würzburg. We don't want to do that because we'll go get creamed, go out to the main street or slide out into the back, into a side street. Now, is there a way to... Yeah, so if you go up here and you right click, you get like a menu system. So let's change marching order. Select first, C card. Select second, E card. Select third. Okay, cool. You can see we don't have any equipment. That's a problem. Um, we have C card as the leader. That's pretty good. He's got high charisma. Um, but it's got sort of, no, not really any perception. It's Anyway, uh, so you can set a leader. Um, you can see here with the party info with the date. It's May 28th, um, the morning, I guess, Würzburg. It sort of shows here. You can sort of gives you a little bit of info as you hover. Our local rep is unknown. Um, I think there's also like sort of more global rep. I'm not sure. Uh, got a little bit of money, but not a lot. Um, this is why some people like to sort of bring in the pre-made characters, take their stuff, and uh, go from there. So what we're going to do is let's go onto the main street. Looking down the main street of Würzburg, you set off toward... Now, again, like, even in a game like, say, like Baldur's Gate, you know, it's been around for 25 years, you know, the amount of assets it had to create to generate the city. So there's only really one city in the whole game because it's it's really nicely detailed. But you know, here with just a few menus, you can see you can sort of create this whole setting if you're willing to buy into the presentation, which I am very happy to do. Uh, so we can like, you know, go here, we can just wait until night. Uh, we can go to the side street where you're less visible. I think what we want to do is Let's try going to the central marketplace because we have a teeny bit of money and we are going to need some weapons. The marked plots, the main market of Würzburg, is the bustling center of it all. Of all business activity, stalls and pavilions fill the downstairs hall while the rich merchants and factors have offices above. You go toward, now we can go to merchants, foreign traders, pharmacists, the uh, Fugger or Fugger, I think it's, I'm going to say Fugger, the Medici, uh, the Hanseatic League. So again, like 1992, the game came on, um, you can see here, a bunch of floppy disks. Here's the upgrade disk that comes with the clue book that fixed the, I think the memory leak that destroyed your game. You know, it looks like eight, ten, five and a quarter floppies. It's not a lot of space, all things considered. So, again, by choosing this path, they managed to really, I don't know, I think really punch above its weight. Uh, you know what? I'm realizing now that we actually do have some equipment. Um, I'm not sure how to, here's the problem. I don't know how to equip. I think what you can do is you can drag... Uh, let me see. I've got the keyboard shortcuts right here. Um, boo, boo, boo. It says A for arm. Let's see if that works. There we go. Okay. So now we've got, you can, oops. You can see, okay, we got a short sword and we got some leather going on. Let's go to Saboto, Saboto. A short sword and some eater water. Now, I think Eater Water will help you, like, dissolve a lock. I think that's what it's for. So you can see no armor, but we've got a sword going on. Brunhild uh, has got a couple of uh, alchemic things. Sunburst, I think great power, hard armor, and true sight. But the main thing right now we're going to equip is short. I think Sunburst sort of is a blinding. 
you know, you could probably guess like sort of like the D and D equivalents from the names, but uh, let's see what this guy just got a good old club. Boom. So we're lacking armor. That's, that's the problem. So now let's go to, uh, I think rope can help you if you get into certain traps, torches can help you, but, um, let's go to main street. Cause I'm looking for craft guilds. Let's see what they have. Okay, arms and armor. That's what I was looking for. Let's see if we can get some armor for Sabato. Armor's way. Now again, I get it. Like it's, you know, it's a lot of... Okay, so we have 10, I think, Groshen Fennings, 130 Fennings overall. So we could pick up a set of... Sabato, and we're going to try for some padded armor just so he doesn't get wrecked. Okay, so it looks like we got it, so let's leave. Um, let's go to Sabato and uh, equipment padded. There we go. Now, here's the trick we need. We don't have much money, right? We have 14 fennings. And what we need to do is we need, I would love to have some ranged weapons, but we, that just might not be in the cards. Let's leave, let's see who else is here. I didn't see any kind of like Fletcher or Archer kind of place, so. Oh, I see, okay. Uh, so yeah, maybe let's go to the weapons guy again and just see if I've Click here, battle axe, field axe, great hammers, nice. I like hammers, mauls, flails, long spear. Again, a lot of um, javelin is thrown weapons, short bow, 24. Um, oh no, 303, 303, I, no way, okay. All right, so I think I'm... So before we, you know, again, you can cut through a side street. You know, again, does it make a difference. I don't know. It's atmospheric, if nothing else. Um, and, and what's nice about this print is that they can just, they can add anything, right? A great fortress. It's a lot of like, a lot of flavor, a lot of color that you might not be able to get with in a modern game, you know, uh, you could, but you know what I mean? Go to the political center and no reason to, but we could look at the posts and notices and the latest gossip. We go to the university. Uh, we go to the churches. Let's uh, look at the latest gossip. Let's see. We can eyes and ears open. You can read the official notices. Ask about affairs elsewhere in the empire. Gossip about the situation here in Würzburg. Try and discover special jobs or interesting tasks. Now it won't let us do it, probably because we're not well known enough, or maybe it's just not available. I'm not sure which. The citizens of Würzburg are hereby prohibited from traveling about the streets in darkness, so there's a curfew, and that's true of a lot of... It's true of a lot of, uh, a lot of the cities. I think there's always a curfew. Let's see what's going on. Yep, no, 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 no news. Let's talk about Würzburg, what's going on here. Despite your best efforts, you could discover absolutely nothing new or different about Würzburg. Okay. Good enough. Let's uh, go to the university. So here's the thing. Latin terms, arrogance, students, blah, blah, blah. So the problem is like Seekhart says after hours of searching. Now the thing is like, how do you make somebody, could I make like Brunhild the leader of the party at this point? Um, so control F1, control F2, control F3, control. Is Brunhild my, um, 
speak Latin. Okay. Um, artifice. Alchemy. Okay, so let's see if Brunhild. So that would be control. Um, control F4. Okay, let's make her the leader now and just see what happens. After hours searching, Brunhild says this is hopeless. Everyone's mumbling in Latin and laughing behind her backs. We'll never find an alchemist this way. Okay, maybe we're just not good. Uh, let's try Eckhart for the saints. Make him leader. No, it's not going to let me do that. Okay. Let's go to the main street. Let's see if there's a church. Oh, darkness covers the main street of Würzburg. Far off, you see the lanterns of the watchmen enforcing curfew. Avoiding them, you set off four. Okay, now that it's night, you can sort of do one thing that is useful. You go to the side streets and the alleys. You want to make him the leader. Uh, tiny gleams from occasional windows provide barely enough light to outline the buildings along the street. Amid impenetrable shadows, you move toward the main street. We want to go into the, the alleys or maybe the docks. We basically want to go pick fights with... You stumble and trip frequently moving through the back alleys. I wonder if we, if we had a torch, if that would be a problem. Okay, so combat. Um, you you want to fight combat? This is sort of like the classic, you know, they might kick our butts, but this is the classic, you know, go clear the rats. You need to go fight bandits to gain reputation, to pick up stuff, to get money, and to start raising your stats. So... Eckhard and Sieghard are, are fighters. And what this does is it uses a real time with pause. The combat that you sort of know from like Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, the Infinity Engine games. Uh, it's used recently in um, Pathfinder Kingmaker, I think is what it defaulted to. I'm just looking at the, the card here. But um, But yeah, I, I don't know if that was in other games, but I can tell you this was the first time I saw it. So this is showing like where you can move. Uh, I don't want to move. I'm trying to figure out if I can. Okay, so let's orders. Let's uh, zoom, finish, I walk towards. Okay, so let's uh let's have C card move there. Let's have a card. Nope. Okay, so maybe we have to then do finished. Okay, so that's that. So then who's next? So that's Eckhard. Yeah, I've sort of made the fighters look sort of similar. I guess that's a mistake, but okay. Now let's have her move there. And then you hit space and everybody starts to move. And then you can hit space again. I'm trying to figure out how to... I thought just having a bump into the edge there would be enough, but maybe not. Okay, so what you're going to see is you got like uh, strength, endurance. I wish I could move them. That doesn't really matter, but like we'll hit pause again. So now you can see the fighting has begun. Um, let me see if there's just a quick shortcut. Um, So if I hit F1, see that, so I don't really want to do that. I want to, no, but I don't want to do that. I want to start attacking. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Other side. Uh, let's see. So first of all, you, what you can do is you can, um, Oh, 
Okay, so one, two, three, four. So when you're in, so let's hit one. That's going to give orders to him. We can attack him, but let's attack him. Uh, you can also do things like you can get enemy info. You can see sort of they're wearing leather um, for their main weapon. They don't seem to have armored pants. Their weapon seems to be fashion and poor quality. Uh, so let's go. We're looking for four. We're going to have four attack. I don't know if this makes any sense, but like in games like Icewind and Dale and stuff, it helps to like pile onto one person the faster you take one down. Uh, because in D&D, at least you attack just as the same strength that full health is with one hit point left. I don't know if that's true here. Um, so let's go to Spoto. We're going to have him pile on. Uh, let's attack him. And then we'll have Brunhild attack him. Okay, and then we hit space. So when you see red, that is the enemies. White is us. So Eckhard, you can see, took some damage. The person he's fighting is lower. Seacard's person is just about done. So let's... Okay, so let's get Seacard now to attack this guy. Saboto needs a new target. So let's get Saboto attacking him. And let's see what happens. Okay, so a couple of things going on here. The map you just saw, I think, is procedurally generated. You know, it sort of takes, like, we're okay, we're in a town. It sort of positions some buildings and creates alleys for out in the woods. It does stuff like that. Uh, other things. There are a ton of systems in play in combat. Like, it tracks, like, are you getting flanked? You know, are you having more than one person attack you? That can really... So maybe there's a good reason to gang up on people. I think there are modifiers for that kind of things. The, the combat under the hood from my understanding, is actually pretty complicated in an in interesting way. Which, again, is not surprising if you consider that, you know, the creator, Mr. Hendricks, who sadly has passed away, I believe, but, you know, his favorite games, one of them was RuneQuest, which, if you know anything about RuneQuest, has a crazy <laughs> combat system. So what we get, we got four... Falchions. Again, you know, it tracks quality of weapons. Five is terrible. You can see ours, 25. That's a pretty standard starting. So five quality is really bad. Um, so we're going to have, let's see, Brunhild's. You know what? Who cares? Let's just take it. We're going to just take it all. I think you can take whatever. And then we're going to start. Oh, I guess I could have distributed it to a different person. So let's leave. And now you can see impact weapons. So it went up and we won. Now Eckhard though took some hits. That's not great. As you stand back from the now motionless bodies, window open and people cheer your victory. An old dignified woman comes to you. Our thanks strangers for stopping these scum. We are finally free of their robberies and beatings. Now what you should be doing in the beginning here is you should be doing this over and over. Um, some activities still proceed the docks. So now that we've had our ambush, we get to where we were going, uh, which was the docks. I don't know if this is supposed to be like your shadow as you're moving through the night. So again, you, know, you can sort of just see where the boats are coming and going. The craft tied to the piers and wharves have many destinations. Some are available now because they leave today. Others are leave in a week. You can travel by boat you, if you can afford the, the fare. Um, yeah, like we could take a boat to Frankfurt and... Um, you know, just see what's going on there. But let's let's stay here in Würzburg. All right. Um, what we want to do is we want to... Uh, I think Seacard, there's a way to give stuff to people. So what I want to do is... Uh, we've got some low-quality leather, but what I want to do is let's give it to... Okay, let's give him one. Uh, so that's the V. I think that's, oops, that's the top. So let's give him some cloth for the bottom. So, okay, so you can see now we're starting to... Um, got a little bit going on, right? So not bad. Oops, let's go to Eckhart, who again was not wearing anything. Let's arm... 
it's not the best. And, you know, different cities is another amazing thing. Um, let's see. You know, different cities have different quality of goods. So one of the nice things about having the 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 clue book is it'll actually, if I can find it, it the, the clue book, I got to say, is really stunning. It's almost indispensable in a way, given how this game is a little tricky to get around and navigate. But I thought part of this was it sort of broke down what cities had like good stuff, but uh, maybe not. Maybe it's in the back. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but definitely, you know, again, if you buy it with on GOG, you get all of it. Um, the nice thing about the steam version is that it has the, a different DOS box. It's DOS box SVN DOM, which I believe is sort of a, sort of a, a forked, version of DOS box that still gets updates. Um, anyway, so what we can do now is we want to go to the side streets and alleys. Cause technically speaking, what we want to do is we want to get jumped, uh, but it doesn't always happen. So let's keep walking, stumble through and trip frequently. Let's see if we get jumped. Nope. Um, so let's go back down a side street and see if we can find We, we want to avoid the main streets because of the curfew. I know that. I think that's true. It's, did we get jumped? Okay, cool. Again, this is what we want. So again, it's a procedurally... I wish I knew how to... Um, shift cursor. Okay, so we hold shift. Oh, okay. That's pretty fast. So you can see it creates like this pretty big, I don't know if there's a like random people, but it's a pretty big map and it's all again, procedurally generated. I think if you go here, you can like leave, but again, we don't want to do that. We want to actually mix it up a little bit. Okay. So let's, uh, let's start. Let's have C he's going to attack. Boom. Uh, let's have Eckhart who's a little wounded. Attack, boom. Now, again, if we had ranged weapons, we could be thrown at these guys and uh, popping them as they came in. So let's, uh, and uh, yeah, you know what? Let's just do this. Um, attack, same guy. And then finally, Brunhild. Attack, same guy. All right, let's see what happens. Again, once the bars come up, that means they've engaged. The left bar is your character, the right bar is the enemy. Um, the 99 is divine favor. If we wanted to like pray or do something like that. So C card took a hit, but now you see he's gotten a bit of a, okay. One's down and much like, you know, an infinity engine game, people will start to do things. So this guy's getting surrounded. So he probably gonna, is going to go down pretty quickly. All right. So, you know, we'll just take everything how are we doing okay uh okay you know we're collecting a little bit of money battle results victory uh it doesn't look like anything went up though so dawn comes gothic spires or black spikes in the night sky oh no 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 this is still the church um and again we're not really looking to I wonder what time it is. Okay, it is Latins, which means it's 3 a.m. It's on the card here. Okay, so it's still middle of the night. Uh, let's see if we can uh, get in a little bit of trouble still. Okay, so it looks like it's back to daylight. So let's um let's head to the to the inn. 
And, uh, let's see. So, as you can see, we can, um, buy or sell horses and mules. We can store things. Although, I think if you store it, it stays here. Let's reconsider the composition of our party. So, you can allow people to retire. Uh, but let's, um, take up residence. So what you see is uh, you can just sort of pass time, but try and earn money. So while you're doing this, you're not out fighting or gaining reputation, I don't think. But uh, so I think Eckhard needs to regain strength. Um, Brunhild. Oh, nope, don't want to do that. Um, Brunhild can do some alchemy work. Okay, so you have oil that improves weapons quality. Uh, this is probably going to increase thickness and quality of armor. It's probably temporary. And then true sight increases the user's perception. So let's uh, do sunburst. Hopefully we don't... I think you can actually blow up the end. So let's see what happens. Ah, so now I don't have any of the ingredients. This is a high-risk magic. Uh, <laughs> so, um, again, a lot of systems in play for a game that comes on eight floppy disks, right? Uh, let's try true sight. I don't, I'm not going to have any ingredients. That's the problem. Uh, so okay, so let's see what else they can do. They can just earn a little money. Can earn ten fennings a day as a craftsman. Let's see what Saboto can do. Earn a little money. Sigheart. Let's have him earn a little money as well. Why not? Spend a day. All right, so we earned some money. Um, let's leave. Let's uh, see what happens if we rest. What I've been trying to figure out is how to get the, the green up. Um, okay, so let's exit to the main street. It's, it should be daytime. Let's... um. Let's head to Central Market. Let's uh, head to the, I wonder what the foreign traders sell. All right, looks like they've got some weapons, two-handed swords, some stuff that wasn't in the other place. Again, 25 quality, so it's pretty standard quality. Two-handed flail is kind of nice, but probably too rich for our blood. We only have 64 fennings. It's nice that they sort of break it down for you because they do put the um, exchange rate on the card. Uh, but uh, if this were all digital, I'd have to have like seven different windows open. As it is now, I just need the, uh, the map open. I wonder if it'll let me sell stuff. Like I have eight falchion. Can I sell those? Sell an item. Okay, it's getting us a little bit of money, right? I have six leathers. Let's sell them. My fear is that it... I'm hoping it's not going to... These aren't worth anything. I'm hoping it doesn't like sell stuff that you have equipped. Okay, so we've got 230 fennings. So we're starting to get a little bit going, right? You sort of, a lot of the games at this time, um, this was sort of the beginning, right? Like, I used to play like the Bard's Tale games, and one of the most satisfying parts of it, even though it's extremely frustrating, the one I spent the most time with was Bard's Tale 3, which might actually be the very first crpg i ever played uh you know a lot uh, i'm gonna grab some water my throat's going a little bit you know we had some consoles growing up like the atari 2600 ColecoVision, and then my my parents but i think mostly my dad was like i don't think there's any point to this you know like it's just a machine that's gonna 
play games that eventually is going to get replaced by a machine that can play better games. So the next time we wanted to get something, he said, let's look at some computers. And we ended up getting a Commodore 64. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to a scenic grove where we can wait and relax. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait till nightfall. And then we can go out and start picking fights. Uh, you can try and camp if you don't want to pay for, for shelter, but the guards might come, I think. Um, but let's uh, slip down on a side street. So anyway, so we got a Commodore 64. And then my, when we got the Commodore 64, my dad's like, well, what was it going to do? And we're like, I don't know. So we went to the store. And we grabbed a couple of games. And I think one of them was Bard's Tale 3. And I have a brother that's a little bit younger than me. And we had a, a very close friend, sadly, passed away. Uh, and then the three of us sort of just circled around the Commodore 64, taking turns playing a single party of Bard's Tale 3. And you start off completely impotent, basically. And just those, you grind out and you grind out and you grind out and you're just making it by the skin of your teeth. And then all of a sudden, like, survival is not quite the goal. You can start, like, poking your head into a dungeon. You can start you know, prodding into see, I'm wondering what this is. Is that like a like a townsperson? Again, the graphics are kind of rough. Uh, so let's start with uh, Sigurd. We're going to have him attack. We're going to have Saboto attack. We're going to have Brunhild attack. I, I wish there was a way to there, there probably is. I just want to move Eckhart up just to make it easier. And then Eckhart, let's uh, attack. Unpause and let's get the fight started. So it's four on four. Um, Saboto takes some hits. I wish he's really taking some hits. So let's pause for a second. Um, we seem to have gotten separated here. So who's Sigurd attacking? Let's all gang up on them. Get them down quickly, even though they're going to get... Well, Sabota's going to get flanked. Um, you know what? Let's, let's have them both attack. Okay, let's just see what happens. Sabota's... That guy's not getting hit. Okay, now they're starting to take some damage. One went... To, uh, so maybe they weren't attacking the same guy. Uh, who's this? That's Eckhard. What's uh, Brunhild doing? Let's attack. Let's have Eckhard switch. Okay. All right. I mean, it wasn't pretty. Sabota's pretty hurt. Um, now, you know, there's, there's different things you can do. Like, you can attack... Uh, oops, flip the side. You can attack, you can throw, you can go for a vulnerable spot, which probably is harder to hit. You can go for a berserk attack, which probably is, you don't worry about your defense so much, but you're going all in. You can parry. There's a, again, there's a lot of options, uh, for what you can do in these fights. It's not just like click to win. You know, you, you, um, Okay, so impact we weapons, nice. I'm kind of curious, like what, what I should do is I should check, okay, Thieves Live Motionless. Uh, let me see. So he's good in edge, so he's got an edge weapon, so that's pretty good. Uh, what about Saboto, what's he up to? He's not really great, but he is best at a, an edge weapon, so let's give him some pants and maybe a better it has got padded armor for the top. So maybe we can maybe we can do a little better than that. Uh, let's give him leather for the top and some clothing for the bottom. And let's uh, jump over. Nope. Oh, but see, this is tricky. The padding is much higher quality. So let's stick with the padding for now. Um, so let's go to three. What is Brunhild good with? Brunhild is good with an edged. Okay. What's Eckhart good with? Eckhart is good with an impaling. Is that a club? 
I'd have to look that up. Okay. But you can also see like, you know, you're, you're dealing with like a light load. I, I don't think it matters how much you carry. It's just what you equip. Um, so yeah, so, and then you can go to party info. You can see our local rep has gone from a nine of like nobody's to a 17 of respected. Uh, we don't have any notes at the moment. Um, anyway, so what I was saying with Bard Sale 3, you know, it's sort of that, you know, you start from nothing and you work your way up. Um, and there's something very satisfying about that. And now we're in pretty rough shape. So let's... Uh, Oh, okay, one more fight. So I think we want to hold Saboto back a little bit. So let's get Sighard going. Uh, one attack, uh, three attack, four, nope, attack. Let's have a, yeah, Brunhild's in okay shape. But let's get this fight going. And then let's get Saboto into the mix once we know. I don't think that's who I told Saboto to go after. Oh, oop, Brunhild's getting hit pretty hard. Uh, Saboto, you were supposed to help here. Okay, so again... Falchions of their crap, though. Edge weapons, okay. Let's see if we can get back to the inn. Suddenly alert, Eckhart senses danger nearby. He warns you of a group of cutthroat thieves in ambush. So this is what streetwise, like these kinds of skill checks can, I, I believe it streetwise helps you avoid if you want. Can't really call upon a saint, I guess. We could try to distract him with alchemy. We could do a sunburst. We could try and ambush them. Again, like, because they go with this, you know, this text-based menu system, I know it probably seems visually dry, like, you know, to stream, which is why, I, you know, I don't know if I would promise like a full Honest to God playthrough, but when you're in the game, I can tell you for me at least, because, you know, I don't, I don't mind, you know, I'm obviously a little older, I don't mind these older games, you know, having the, I'd rather have these options than have the graphics you know, sort of take over the presentation. And because of that, it feels to me like it's much more of a, a tabletop RPG in, in spirit than, than a computer RPG. Um, so let me see. We're not, we're not going to grovel. Screw that. Let's try to distract him without alchemy. So we sort of choose this. Brunhild's going to use Sunburst. The potion bottle bursts in front of the cutthroats while they're delayed. You dash off easily, outdistancing their pursuit. Uh, so let's see if we can get to... I don't know what time it is. That's the problem. It is... Oh, it's Prime. Uh, which Prime would be around 6 a.m. So things might be starting to open. So let's see if we can sell some of the stuff that we just picked up. Uh, nope, can't sell that. Okay, so let's try going to Armorer's Way, see if we can sell things. I don't know if we can drop stuff, so let's sell this.
Okay, so again, 430. Uh, so then, you know, could we start upping our weapons? You know, can we get... No, we can't. <laughs> can we get armor? No, no, we cannot. Because, again, it's crazy expensive, which, again, is why you sometimes grab stuff off the pre-made characters. Uh, let's try the blacksmiths. Okay, so we have 25 quality weapons, but they offer 24, so it's slightly, slightly below average here in Würzburg. Um, I don't know... There's no way to get information, I believe, on the weapons. Uh, so let's see. He's good at edge, and he has a short sword. It'd be nice to get crossbows, stuff like that. Especially for Sabato, who seems to be a little bit of a mess. Uh, do they have crossbows here? That might be too much to hope for. Oh, shields. <laughs> shields could be nice. Um, can't hurt, right? Let's get... Uh, it's not it's not Sabato. Let's... For Eckhart. Let's get him a shield. What do we got? 170 left. Okay, let's... Let's stop purchasing there. Let's, um... Go to Eckhart. This is Eckhart. Let's uh, equip a shield. So now you can see, you know, it's sort of got this paper doll. 1992. You know, the, the scene, the, it's got all these things, but at the time, I think I was looking this up, Ultima 7 and Ultima Underworld and a Might and Magic 7. But the main ones that I remember coming out around this time are Ultima 7 and Ultima Underworld. And the interesting thing about that, as much as I'm talking about like this world in the menus, is that Ultima 7 is stunning in, <laughs> in its presentation of the world with a more graphical approach. It, you know, it doesn't give you the breadth of like, you know, spires of cathedrals and blah, blah, blah. But that world was genuinely impressive. And I've barely scratched the surface of Ultima Underworld, but I've always heard that game is just the definition of immersive. So, you know, this wasn't the only game in town at the time, you know, pulling that off. But um, let's see. So, yeah, so let's let's see if we can head back to the inn, to the main street. Uh, inn with stables. I got to, how do you save? Saving is Alt-S. Can I just save anywhere? I don't know if I can. Uh, let's see. Uh, session one? I don't know. Uh, what I want to do is I want to try resting. Let's see, a Groshen is 12 Fenning, so I think we have plenty of money for that. Okay, so you can enjoy the good food and pleasant conversation, but staying a month will lead to problems. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to... Let's try healing one more time. I'm trying to figure out how to... Okay, so that's how you bump up the green. And again, like... <laughs> it changes, I guess, as it goes from day to night. Like, you know, because of how they choose to do this, you know, they don't have to worry about, like, real-time lighting. You just, you know... It, I know it may seem rudimentary. You slip in a different card, change up the text a little bit. Both are probably cheap to pay resource-wise. Um, and so, yeah, let me save one more time. I don't know how this works. Session. Let's see if it'll overwrite. No, no who knows? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start wrapping up, but I'm going to do uh, something that Josh uh, Josh Sawyer did in his playthrough, which is uh, we want to... Now, let's go... Uh... Basically, I want to wait till morning. Uh... Exit, this, exit to the main street. 
Let's save again. I'm just calling a session. I'm hoping it's overwriting, but I don't know. Uh, cause what I want to do is I'm going to do what Josh uh, Sawyer did. I'm going to go out into the world, just show you really quickly what that looks like. And then we'll, we'll call it and we'll reload here in the city. Um, I'm getting, I, I can see why. So you just go out the main gates. The gate is heavily guarded, but most of the guards are watching for people trying to get in, not for those trying to leave, getting into the city illegally, not for those trying to leave. You decide to, again, <laughs> because of the approach, we can simply walk out of the city right past the guards. We could do a stealth check, hide among the people leaving the city. Oh, sorry, agility and streetwise. We can use an alchemical distraction, slip past the guards. We can pray to a saint for aid. Not really, but we can draw a weapon and attack the guards. We can see if it's possible the city by the, we can climb a wall. Like, again, like, <laughs> like eight different options just to leave the city, right? Um, we're just going to walk out because there's no reason why we can't. So as you can see, for no reason, it's tapping his foot. Up here on the right, uh, you you know, have the time of day. Here we are in the city. We've got like roads. Uh, we've got a river, which is probably why we could take a boat to different places. Um, so we can just start clicking. And you can see that changes as we go. If you stay on the road, you get, this will change slower. So staying on the road lets you travel faster. If you travel through woods, oh, suddenly uh, a sunder of wild boars bursts from the undergrowth, taken aback by this unexpected onslaught, you. Let's try and dodge. This will be an agility check. They charge through your band. None of you are hit and the boars discouraged keep on running. So, a random encounter. I just wanted to walk through the woods because you can see it starts to move a lot quicker, right? Uh, but when you get to the clearings, it's not so bad, but a road, again, provides the fastest. Uh, so, again, if you remember, we are in Fertzburg, right around here. So if we start to head up this road to the north, we can make ourselves or make our way to Frankfurt on Main, which I think is what we could take the boat to if we had traveled by boat. So let's uh, let's do that. So it's kind of true. I was trying to figure out a way to like, how can we like look at this map? Oh, that's something right there. I don't know. Let's just check what it is because again, it doesn't matter. In a nearby clearing, you see an old wooden shrine sheltering a cut stone altar. The roof and walls are weathered but sturdy. Fresh flowers adorn the statue of St. Mary within. From the shrine, a well-worn path leads to a small sod hut. An aged, aged monk in a threadbare habit hobbles up to the path to greet you. You make an offering of money, which we don't have, nod to the monk, genuflect towards the shrine, and leave. The monk nods back with a sad smile and watches you depart. Soon the shrine disappears behind you. And again, it's just, you know, it's just, it's... And, <laughs> you know, just to, you know, go back to um, the map. There was a way to reset this. I wish I could remember what it was. Um, but you can see, like, most of this area is what's in the game. And, you know, a lot of it when you're in cities is those menus. But, again, for, for me... Uh, you know, it, it evokes the feeling of a paper and pencil game, you know, where it provides some text to paint, you know, a general picture. And, and you know, again, to try and tie it into see, uh, to tabletop RPGs, like I'm at a Forbidden Lands game, Forbidden Lands uh, from Free League. And, you know, a lot of it is like, and, and this is true of like a lot of OSR games. It's, it's going into, and I think we talked about this like on a damn fine coffee or something. A lot of it is, you know, like table generation, stuff like that, right? A lot of it is random. So to me, this is that, you know, you, you know, maybe they create the world, but then, you know, when you get to the Hamlet, you, you know, the Hamlet of Ashoffen nestles up against a hill. A small church sits amidst a graveyard. Smoke curls from the blacksmith's forge. Pleasant uh, peasants labor in the fields and somewhere a dog barks. That description for me does far more heavy lifting than like approaching something in 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 Skyrim, right? You know, you might get like the buildings, they might, you know, put the 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 assets in, 
they might even have like a dog scurrying around. But that paragraph to me, you know, paints a picture of, because I'm filling in cracks, I'm filling in the details, where in Skyrim, because it's, you know, they only have, you know, resources to display so many triangles on screen at a time, the, the village might be four buildings, you know, and it might feel small, like the church and a graveyard, you know, there might be some kind of environmental storytelling, but I don't know. Uh, so you can choose to talk to the Schultz, Schultz, the village leader. You can visit the church, go to the smithy, seek shelter for the night. Let's go to the church. The chapel is small but well-kept. A tiny graveyard encircles it. You decide to. Um, let's give some, some tithe. Accepting your donation, the priest says even a poor man or woman can gain favor with heaven by giving to help others. The biblical tale of the widow's might demonstrates this to our satisfaction. The chapel is small but well kept. A tiny graveyard encircles it. You decide to uh, let's attend mass. When you ask the priest about Holy Communion, he says we hold mass every morning at prime and on Sunday at prime and vespers. We would be honored to have you present at that time. Okay, so it might not be the right time of day. Uh, what time is it actually? It is nons, which is as you might expect, uh, three p.m. So prime, we'd have to go to six a.m. So let's um. Let's see if we can leave here. Let's see if we can shelter for the night. You are at the home of an elderly woman who gladly takes in strangers. She is cheerful and welcomes you with a toothless grin. Guests use the bed. I sleep in the kitchen is her common saying. Uh, so, I mean, that's the thing. Again, like, it's not just like you walk into the room and, you know, you you go up to the to the sprites of the the innkeeper they you know present this little painting of her of a person and because resource wise ch text is cheap you could probably come up with tons of descriptions so we get 8 hours of sleep we want to go to prime mat did we miss it no that's midnight let's catch up on local rumors Leaning back in her rocker, the old woman ruminates over her answer. The nearest city is Frankfurt, Frankfurt M, and I suppose you could say we owe allegiance to it. Not much happens around here, really. Okay, you know, just some flavor text. Uh, if it's midnight, we want to go to Prime, which is 6 a.m. Um, let's leave. Let's see what happens if you go to the church. Let's talk to the leader. Authority in a German hamlet is invested in the Schultz, a combination of mayor, bailiff, and soldier. He is wealthy for a peasant and has the power to pass judgment and administer to the law. Administer the law with the help of the village elders. He also has heavy responsibilities. He owns armor and weapons and in wartime is required to leave his home and fight for the distant masters. Despite his importance, he's willing to talk to you. You... <laughs> Go all in. Accuse this hamlet of satanic practices. We haven't seen anything yet that would give us that information. But uh, the Schultz has little of import to tell you. Uh, the nearest town, mass every morning. You know what? Let's let's do this. Let's um let's wrap it up by accusing the hamlet of satanic practices. We're not going to say. We're just going to. His face pales when you accuse his people of sorcery and witchcraft, and he orders you out of the hamlet. His anger is so a obviously righteous that you feel quite guilty. You know, you have sinned in thus making a false accusation. You wonder how you ever could have thought that this village was satanic. Innocent babies cry. Peasants laugh at their work and life is everywhere. Everything seems normal, healthy, and happy. Your suspicions were clearly unfounded. You leave for a few hours to let the Sch Schultz's anger cool. Perhaps you should return. You should not return at all. So virtue goes down. Blah, blah. But you should know there are villages out there that are satanic. So, uh, let's see game. Let's quit to DOS. And, uh, yeah, you can sort of see how I, so there you go. That's the opening of Darklands. You know, we started in Würzburg. We got a little reputation going, got a little money. We, you know, got a little bit of equipment, not very good. But again, like I, I will keep playing this for a little bit, but I, I, again, I do not promise a full playthrough, um, because it'd be very grindy. You probably don't need to see every minute. Like when I would do demons souls, you know, I could do, except for when I stumbled over world four, I, I could do like a section in a session. Right. So there was a reason to see every single part, um, 
but yeah, it, it's truly an amazing game. Like I said, I'll link to Matt's chat's little thing and his interview with the creator. Um, I'll link to Josh uh, Sawyer, uh, you know, renowned game developer. He, you know, his thing so he can offer some insight. Uh, he, <laughs> he likes to sing, especially in the second video that he has on YouTube. Um, he's a much better singer than I am, so that might be worth it. But again, uh, sorry, just banging the mic. Tons of systems, heavily inspired by Traveler, Rune Quest. You could sort of see the D100, the Life Path character creation. Uh, tons of skill checks. It's all made possible because they use these, you know, text interface, which, you know, isn't very flashy, but for me offers just incredible wealth of possibilities. Um, and we only clearly began to scratch the surface of this wide open world, which in my mind has parallels to what you see now from a lot of like OSR games, like the shadow dark one or something, uh, especially like, um, where is it? Uh, Forbidden Lands. You know, the idea of like, you know, just the, the world's not random, but you know, the stuff that happens might be, it might be generated from tables and charts. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like, and again, this made me realize that there was a type of fantasy that really could engage my imagination. And it's what got me to get back into role-playing as, you know, this stage of my life, you know, role-playing has to be done online. Uh, I don't have a gaming group in my area to role-play with. And what finally got me to decide, you know what, I want to run something was remembering how much I love Darklands and then trying to find something that I could sort of pour that love of this old computer game into, to make me want to run a tabletop RPG. And that game was Deus Volt. It's not, <laughs> it's like James Bond meets monks in the 13th century. So it's a, a different vibe, but a lot of the, the underlying world um, is very similar. There's a game Ars Magica. Uh, might have some overlaps. It's made me look at that more closely than I might have. It's, and it's all because of this one computer game. So Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully there was something here that was a little bit interesting. Um, I will do some more and, uh, you know, stick around if that interests you. Don't stick around. You know, if, if it's not your thing, that's okay. Uh, again, this is Black Lodge Trivia Night. You know, we're on YouTube. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. I think it's at Black Lodge RPG. I'll put that in the show notes as well. Uh, like, subscribe. Um, if you prefer audio versions of podcasts, you know, you're not going to get that here, but we do actual plays of RPGs. We have sort of a podcast called uh, Damn Fine Coffee. Um, we've just started a, a little while ago a new thing called uh, The Bookhouse Boys. Obviously, there's a Twin Peaks theme. Uh, so there's a lot of different audio content. You can find that basically wherever you get your podcast. But again, it's all here on YouTube uh, if you want to watch. Um, so thank you again and uh, take care. Bye-bye.